Everyone can be seated now. That was really fun. So welcome everyone. I'm Roz Siegel, the Harvard Medical School Dean for Graduate Education. It is my great pleasure to welcome you all to the 11th annual graduation ceremony for the master's programs at Harvard Medical School. Welcome Dean Daly. Welcome Dr. Rebecca Brendel, graduates, families, friends, faculty, program heads and managers, and distinguished guests. I would like to start by noting that Harvard University is located on the traditional and ancestral land of the Massachusetts, the original inhabitants of what is now known as Boston and Cambridge. At this time, we are paying respects to the people of the Massachusetts tribe, both past and present, and we honor the land itself, which remains sacred to the Massachusetts people. This today is a very welcome day of celebration for us all. For our wonderful graduates, this is a culmination and celebration of one, two, or more years of creative and diligent work in advanced biomedical and health studies. For families and friends, this is a moment to recognize the achievements of their loved ones and to look forward to the future careers. For the outstanding faculty and staff, this is a celebration of educating the next generation of leaders in biomedicine and health sciences, and a recognition of your great dedication and resilience. Congratulations to all of you. At Harvard Medical School, we pride ourselves on offering a diverse array of master's programs that not only reflect the needs of the modern world, but also prepare our wonderful students to become leaders in their fields. Today celebrates the graduates of nine master's programs, bioethics, biomedical informatics, clinical investigation, clinical service operations, <laughs> global health delivery, <laughs> healthcare quality and safety, immunology, media, medicine and health, and, <laughs> and medical education. While each of these programs are very distinct, they share a common goal of working with and educating future leaders who will advance our ability to understand and treat diseases that afflict people and optimize the ways in which we care for diverse patients. The past few years really highlight why this goal is so critical. The graduates of each program are well prepared to deal with the repercussions of pressing health and scientific concerns in our society. Whether it is the immunologist deciphering the immune response to SARS-CoV-2, the biomedical informaticians who can rapidly identify all novel and evolving viruses, clinical investigators who test new therapies, leaders in clinical service operations who rearrange cl clinical care to deal with a crisis, and those in health safety and health care quality and safety who make sure to prevent hospital-based transmission and work to keep hospital facilities free from violence. While those in bioethics make sure we treat all patients fairly and equitably. <laughs> Experts in global health delivery who can coordinate responses across the entire world while those in medical education help advance the education of diverse trainees at a time of huge social divisions. Our newest program, Media Medicine and Health, addresses the goal of effectively communicating authentic information about medical and scientific issues, and we have all seen how important that is. 
speaking directly to the graduates. It is an honor for me today to stand before you to celebrate your achievements. Each of you has spent countless hours studying, researching, and learning to master your chosen field. And today is the culmination of that dedication and hard work. Each of you has chosen to pursue careers that will shape the future of science and healthcare, improve patient outcomes, and push the boundaries of our understanding of the world. Your unwavering commitment to making a difference in the lives of others is truly inspiring. Your Harvard Medical School education has equipped you to be agents of change, to transform healthcare systems, and to make a lasting impact on the lives of those you serve. I am sure you will all embrace the opportunities and challenges that lie ahead with passion, curiosity, and resilience as you become the leaders in science and healthcare. The need for dedicated experts in healthcare and science explains the rapid growth in our master's programs. Today, we are graduating 250 students and celebrating 29 mid-year graduates from the nine programs. We have 278 students continuing in their programs, and we already have over 300 students who will be starting programs in the fall. We are really committed to our students and to their training, and we look forward to developing a group of dedicated and involved alumni. We welcome you, the new graduates, to this expanding and greatly inspiring group of leaders. Welcome. Every, every year, I am so impressed throughout the year by the dedication and leadership of the program heads and their managers. This is a group that works together to share best practices in education and biomedical sciences and is undaunted by any impediments in their path. You provide critical training, mentoring, and support for all the students. And you, yourselves, are fantastic role models. Thank you for all you do. I want to take this opportunity to thank Dr. Johanna Gutlerner, the Senior Associate Dean for Graduate Education. Johanna works tirelessly <laughs> to develop outstanding educational programs and advance the careers of all the students. And I want to thank Kim Lincoln, Director of Administration and Student Affairs, as well as Gabby Calderon and James Boggy for making the master's programs work so seamlessly. This is an opportunity to thank all these leaders. It is now my great honor and pleasure to introduce someone who has been instrumental in shaping the direction of Harvard Medical School and supporting our students throughout their academic journeys. Please join me in welcoming our esteemed Dean of Harvard Medical School, Dr. George Daly, to the podium. Well, thank you, Dean Siegel. Um, I am truly honored uh, to be here with all of you for this wonderful occasion, a celebration of our master's students' accomplishments. Um, as noted, we are honoring 250 graduates from nine different master's programs at Harvard Medical School. Outside of the US and Canada, you call home Ghana, Korea, Malaysia, and Malawi, and others. And truly global programs, uh, but no matter where you are from or where you're headed, each of you has contributed intellectually to the Harvard Medical School community, and I hope 
that while you've been here, you have made the most of your time. You've researched mistreatment toward patients in labor, and you've investigated the use of targeted protein degradation to enhance CAR T cell therapies. You've increased the visualization tools for genomics analysis. You've explored the effectiveness of private sector tuberculosis services in Peru. You have collectively done impressive work. And despite your varied interests and aspirations, you all have one trait in common, and that's courage. Many of you took a mid-career pause to begin your master's programs here at Harvard Medical School. Now, not only was that courageous, it was a bold and admirable decision, especially as many of you started in the midst of a pandemic. Now, in spite of the associated risks and sacrifices and uncertainties of spending the time and resources to further your education, you chose to better yourselves, and in doing so, you will better humanity. Our master's programs represent nine distinct and powerful lenses through which to view the healthcare sector. Whether you're graduating with expertise in bioethics, <laughs> biomedical informatics, <laughs> clinical investigation, clinical service operations, Global health delivery. <laughs> healthcare safety, healthcare quality and safety, very important. <laughs> Immunology, our new media, medicine, and health. <laughs> or medical education. The fruit, I have to pause for that one. The fruits of your labors will help us to build a more resilient healthcare system both here and, and around the world. Now, indeed, the COVID-19 pandemic has been a brutal reminder that our world is only as healthy as the infrastructures and policies that govern it. In examining the social determinants of health, in seeing how the disparate elements of our healthcare system are inextricably linked, we are here and able to treat not just individuals, but actually whole societies too. And that is my charge to you. As you leave this campus to enact social change worldwide, discover what it means from where you sit to treat society at large. Now we know all too well, of course, that modern society desperately needs healing. The therapeutic regimen for many of its current ailments are complex, and it will require expansive thinking. And it will require the collaborative approach to public health and medicine that you have learned during your time here. Our collective experience with the Massachusetts Consortium on Pathogen Readiness, which forged a collective scientific brain trust around the immediate challenges of the COVID-19 pandemic, showed us that collaboration can generate a tsunami of new knowledge. It also made us realize that there is virtually no area of biomedicine that can't assemble world-class teams from a variety of specialties, so go forth and do that. Let us redouble our efforts to care for society through innovative methods of collaboration and resource sharing. Let us democratize mathematical modeling of infectious disease. Let us expand access to health data. Let's devise novel techniques in medical education. And let's empower communities to make population health a priority. Now today, I'm excited to hear from Rebecca weintraub Brendel, who is the director of our Master in Science in Bioethics program. <laughs> I recently had the honor of appointing Dr. Brendel as the new director of the Harvard Medical School Center for Bioethics, a major leadership role that she will undertake beginning in June. And I am sure that Dr. Brendel's remarks will foreshadow the great work that she intends to do at the helm of the center. 
and the transformative change that all of you will be setting forth to achieve when you leave here today. Indeed, the courage that brought you all here sets the tone for excellence in your careers and in your service to community. You are the sense makers, the dreamers, the storytellers who will redefine healthcare for the second half of the 21st century. And you are the healers who will tend to our society every step of the way. I salute you and wish you the best of luck. Congratulations, our master's graduates. And now it is my pleasure to introduce Dr. Becca Brendel. Now, in addition to her appointments within the bioethics programs at HMS, Dr. Brendel bases her clinical work in psychiatry at the Massachusetts General Hospital. She's uh, served in multiple roles at the MGH over the past years, including uh, the medical director of the One Fund Center for Boston Marathon Bombing Survivors, and as clinical director of the Red Sox Foundation, the MGH home-based program for post-9-11 service members and their families. She currently serves as a member of the American Medical Association Council on Ethical and Judicial Affairs and, remarkably, as president of the American Psychiatric Association. Dr. Brendel, it's an honor to hear from you. Please. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dean Daly. Dean Daly, Dean Siegel, Senior Associate Dean Gutlerner, faculty, administrators, family, friends, and most of all, graduates. <laughs> I'm so honored to have this opportunity to address you today as we celebrate the accomplishment of this year's Harvard Medical School Master's graduates and the growth and impact of the HMS master's programs themselves. At my first master's graduation in 2016 with the first graduating class of the Master of Bioethics program, there were six master's programs, 10 bioethics graduates, and a total of 63 graduates. We not only fit in an auditorium, but rows were cordoned off so it didn't look empty. Seven years later, there are nine programs and more than 275 graduates receiving their degrees and being honored under this grand tent. As Dean Daly said, this growth represents the growing complexity of our world, need for scientific and biomedical leadership, and the opportunities for impact. On behalf of all the master's program directors, we are so proud of you and know that as you head out with diplomas in hand, you are ready to do great things. We cannot wait to see what you accomplish. And we need you, the next generations of leaders in biomedical science and informatics, immunology, medical education, clinical investigation, operations, quality and safety, global health delivery, health communications, and bioethics. You are graduating at an extraordinary time in history and a pivotal moment for our society as we face the future. For the past three years, our lives have been disrupted and dominated by the COVID-19 global pandemic. For the past three years, our shared goals in the biomedical community and our shared responsibilities were in sharp relief as we rose to the occasion to first flatten the curve and reduce the spread of COVID-19, and then to harness our knowledge, science, and shared global ingenuity to develop a vaccine and therapeutics to prevail and bring the pandemic to its conclusion. For the past three years, we've all remembered where we were when the world shut down with little notice or preparation. 
the challenge for us today is what now? As you graduate today, you stand with the world at a crossroads. With the expiration of the public health emergency in the US on the eve of this grand moment in your lives, you are no doubt asking yourselves where you will go next. That is a very important question, both for every graduate and for the people who supported your work and nurtured you through the vicissitudes and trials of these degrees you've now completed. Yet at this critical time, as we emerge from the COVID-19 pandemic, we must be sure to ask ourselves not only where we can go, but where we ought to go. We have a once in a lifetime opportunity to advance our work and the human condition as we rebuild. We have before us then both the inevitability and the responsibility for creating the post-pandemic future. The inevitability of the future is perhaps so obvious it needs no attention. But just to be sure, what I mean by this inevitability is that time will go on and things will happen, whether we plan it or not, and whether we like it or not. Our responsibility for the future, however, is an entirely different and tremendously demanding matter. To figure out how we fulfill our responsibility for the post-pandemic future requires us to remember where we've been and to discern what we've learned as we set one foot in front of the other in pursuit of the future. During the height of the pandemic, we longed for a return to normal, to the way things used to be. We are not alone in this nostalgic desire. It is one powerful dimension of our survival narrative. For example, this phenomenon is prominent in French Nobel laureate Albert Camus' literary treatment of contagion in The Plague, which describes the course and experience of a rat-borne pestilence in the fictional French port city of Oran sometime in the mid 20th century. Before the plague, Oran was known best for its ordinariness. In Camus' words, quote, the banality of the town's appearance and of life in it. Overnight, however, as Oran became anything but commonplace as it went into quarantine lockdown, for much of his work, Camus chronicles the turns of events resulting from the plague that we now are all too familiar with from our own pandemic experience. But late in the book, as the pestilence is on the wane, the narrative turns to where we find ourselves now, the future. Taking on the desire for nostalgic return, one character asks, quote, but what do you mean by a return to normal life? The response from another, new films at the picture houses. In this mundane response, Camus captures the desire to go back to the simple pleasures of life as we once knew it, worry not, even escape our reality at the movies for a few hours. After all, after three years, haven't we had enough? Camus proceeds to wonder about this wish to erase the plague in favor of pre-contagion simplicity, quote, was it supposed that the plague wouldn't have changed anything and the life of the town would go on as before, exactly as if nothing had happened? He acknowledges the wish to be able to forget and to move forward, quote, naturally our fellow citizens' strongest desire was and would be to behave as if nothing had changed, and for that reason, nothing would be changed in a sense. After all, it's hard to see all that we've been through and all that's been lost in full and singular focus. Camus, however, quickly counters this desire to forget by offering an alternate view, quote, but to look at it from another angle, one can't forget everything, however great one's wish to do so. 
The plague was bound to leave traces anyhow in people's hearts. Today, too, we must not forget the ways in which the COVID-19 pandemic has left traces in our hearts. On this account, what we've accomplished and learned from the COVID-19 pandemic has a lot to do with science and discovery, and also much to do with our humanity and our values. What the post-pandemic future will look like is our responsibility. As leaders in the biomedical fields, we face immense opportunities and also challenges. Our science is developing beyond what was imaginable even a decade ago. Gene editing technology, mRNA vaccines, cloning, and augmented intelligence are some notable examples. At a time of triumph with the most rapid and promising vaccine development process in the history of the human race, however, bringing the miracle of science into a public acceptance was anything but straightforward. In the polarized political environment that we find ourselves, even well-accepted, reproducible, and demonstrable scientific facts are subject to debate and even rejection. While we likely cannot counter politics single-handedly or individually take on every instance of misinformation and disinformation, there are critical steps that we can take. First, especially in light of those who would discredit the power of science to save lives for their own gain, we must be sure that our work, our data, our communication, and our community engagement uphold the pillars of integrity, honesty, and reliability. More so even than celebrating our discovery and achievement, we must also be transparent about the limitations of what we know and what we can do, such that we do not undermine the public credibility of scientific knowledge with unsubstantiated exuberance. Rigorously conducted science is of course a critical pillar of a brighter and healthier future. But alone, it will not be enough in a post-pandemic world. We must also lean into the traces, the indelible imprints of the pandemic in our hearts as the broader decisions we make as a society go beyond data and facts to the realms of values, judgments, relationality, and shared commitments. The challenges ahead in the post-pandemic world require us to focus on our knowledge and also on the pandemic's vestiges residing deep within. All of which is to say that this core idea of following our reason and data and our hearts and emotions in our work must be central as we face our post-pandemic future. This idea is not new. For centuries, philosophers and social scientists alike have posited that traces in our hearts what we might identify as our commitments and passions are important motivators and drivers of action. For example, the Scottish philosopher David Hume in the 1700s famously critiqued reliance on reason as motivating behavior and grounding moral reasoning. He called reason, quote, the slave of the passions. Hume himself had quite a lot to say about this assessment, as have countless scholars of his work since the time of his writings. But for today, the key point is resonance with the echoes COVID-19 has left behind in our hearts and our humanity. For Hume, thinking and reasoning alone are indolent. Our desire comes first, and then our reasoning is instrumental in bringing about our response our moral assessments, and our actions. In all that we do and discover, we must ask why, understand, and be clear about our motivations and our goals. Our rigorous science itself is objective, but the commitments underpinning what we choose to investigate and the implications of our discoveries are not value neutral. In other words, 
we must pursue our science not just because we can, but because our values and commitments, the traces in our hearts, guide us that we should or we must in the interest of a brighter and healthier future. If Camus is correct that we cannot, and I've, as I've argued, ought not, forget the lingering effects of a harrowing global pandemic, one that took the lives of more than a million people in the US alone, then we must answer its calling. How we emerge from the crucible of COVID-19 to address the challenges at hand for our society and our planet will depend on how we generate knowledge in the service of health going forward. And it will also depend on how we heed the moral remnants of COVID in our hearts to ask questions about our responsibilities and commitments to creating the world of the future. We must remember to ask not only can we, but should we and why? And if so, when? What are the scientific gains society needs for a post-pandemic future and how do we make them broadly available in the interest of human progress, health, and justice? How will we ensure that in deciding what discoveries to pursue, we are making choices that benefit the many, not just the curiosity and well-being of the few? We cannot accept the stark disparities in health and in life we experience in this country not to mention globally. These considerations are, and ought to be, the post-pandemic imprints in our hearts. Driving science and clinical practice with values, of course, is no small task, though, especially in the polarized world in which we now find ourselves. But we need not and must not lose hope that we can heal as a society. We shouldn't be surprised that we're facing so many challenges after the disruption of COVID-19. We no doubt have challenges before us, but we also have a rare, a perhaps once in a century, opportunity to reinvigorate our institutions and public lives by following the traces in our hearts towards recapturing connection, fostering relationships, and strengthening communities from a place of shared values. On this view, the challenges are great, but the possibilities are endless. And so, as you are graduating, today you are receiving an academic degree and a <laughs> diploma as tangible proof of your accomplishments. You are passing from one stage of knowledge and experience to a higher one which positions you to embrace a vision for the future that draws not only on our science and knowledge, but celebrates our humanity and our values. The traces in our hearts occasioned by these unfathomable three years of pandemic. Before we move on to celebrations, however, a quick word of caution. Graduate also means to change gradually a reminder that this road ahead is long and will no doubt have its challenges. We cannot get discouraged. We must not get discouraged. Our measured and consistent efforts will lead to success in the long run, so long as we lead with our values to embrace the potential of our science. As we move forward from this day into the post-pandemic future, and realize the potential and power of data and technology, immunology, clinical science, innovation, services, quality and safety, communication, media, global health delivery, and bioethics. Let us not forget the traces in our hearts in setting the course. Where we go from here is ours to create. 2023 master's graduates, the future is yours and the future will be bright by virtue of your contributions as you embark on your journeys. We could not be prouder of you. Congratulations. Thank you.
Okay, I'm not quite done yet. My students are used to this. <laughs> Um, it is now my pleasure to introduce Kosti Sinopoulos, MBE graduate uh, and <laughs> president <laughs> and president of the Master Student Council. Kosti. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Brendel, Dean Daly, Dean Siegel, Dean Gottlerner, esteemed faculty and program directors, and most importantly, fellow graduates of 2023. Congratulations. <clears throat> Calimera, as we say in Greek. Can you all try that? Calimera. Excellent. So, the arc of the moral universe is long, but it bends towards justice. Reflecting upon these words of eternal wisdom from Martin Luther King Jr. and those from the late Paul Farmer and his ideals of expert mercy and accompaniment, let us ponder. Those members in the communities we will be called to serve who are sick, unhoused or homeless, the poor, the refugees, those living with disabilities, physical and intellectual, seen and unseen, they too deserve the greatness of our collective skills, expertise, attention, and care. In this virtue ethics and ethics of care, ideology, and worldview, let us remember what my fellow countryman, Aristotle, wisely said. <laughs> yes, I was born where Aristotle was born, so I can proudly say that. He, he wisely said that morality is a habit of character and our goal should be a virtuous life in pursuit of eudaimonia, evdemonia, which Professor Tyler Vanderville would equate to human flourishing. But how do we keep bending this arc more effectively? How do we make sure that it is actually continuing to bend are we assessing the progress appropriately using data that are valid, meaningful, and representative? How do we ensure that young people learn those vi these values which shall enable them to become good, active, and productive citizens in tomorrow's society, always acting in character as moral agents? So with the welfare of the public in mind, the alleviation of our fellow human suffering at heart, and as an end or telos, together with human flourishing, let us ask ourselves not what Harvard Medical School can do for us, remembering JFK, but what we can do for the world beyond. Do we want to do good? How can we care? Can caring be taught? Yes, it can. Medicine, health, ethics, our policies and laws are all based on the shared understanding that there are certain inalienable human rights that ought to be respected and afforded to each and every one of us, like the right to health. Is this utopian, a critic might ask? Maybe. Is it worth it? Absolutely. Are we there yet? Definitely not. Therefore, as Harvard Medical School graduates, we need to do more collectively to educate all people far and wide how to care for and respect one another, and eventually how to strive towards peace, understanding, and an unassailable respect for human dignity. It might not always be morally right to do what is rational, but it is always rational to do what is morally right. Our objective can be seen as not just eliminating disease and avoiding sickness to achieve health, but rather pursuing well-being, happiness, and self-actualization for all. If we endeavor to stay true to the part of the mission here at Harvard Medical School, which is to nurture a diverse, inclusive community dedicated to alleviating suffering and improving health and well-being for all, then we ought to truly 
build individual and institutional capacity to achieve excellence, foster innovation, and ensure equity in health locally, nationally, and globally. Only when we emphasize the importance of the other in our lives and empathize with that other human being, can we work together, cooperate, cohabituate, and co-create meaning together in a sympraxis or symbiosis, another nice Greek word. The transcendence that must be pursued is that from the person, atomo, to the public, kinonia or polis, or as Gustafsson put it, we have to see ourselves making the transcendence between what a human being is to what being human ought to be. Ralph Waldo Emerson said this on what it means to triumph, alluding to a triumph of principles. What is success? To laugh often and much, to win the respect of intelligent people and the affection of children, to appreciate the beauty, to find the best in others, to leave the world a bit better, whether by a healthy child a garden patch, or a redeemed social condition. To know even one life has breathed easier because you have lived. This is to have succeeded. So my fellow Harvard Medical School, master's graduates of 2023, what are we going to do for others in the fierce urgency of now? We can love and care for our neighbors be a good Samaritan acting with beneficence. We can aspire to be a counterweight to the erosion of our social and our democratic norms. We can exemplify a commitment to health equity and equal moral worth of every person, the inherent moral worth of every individual, because praxis starts with words, ideals, and ideas that can change the world. We can seize the day, every day, carpe diem. I challenge you to go out and make your lives and the lives of others extraordinary. With your excellence that each and all of you, all of us, have pursued and achieved, and with grace and humility, Let's go and change the world outside of Harvard Medical School. Be the agents of change of the cosmos against racism and all faces of oppression. Thank you and Godspeed. Thank you so much, Kosti. That was beautiful. Um, hello, I am Johanna Gutlerner. I'm Senior Associate Dean for Graduate Education, and it is my distinct honor to lead you through the part of the program that I think you've all been waiting for, the presentation of the Harvard Medical School 2023 Master's Program graduates. I will ask each of our program heads, uh, I'll ask leadership from each of our programs to come up and say a few words, and then we will read our graduates' names, and you'll come up and get your diploma and take a picture. So the first program to present their graduates will be the Master of Bioethics, led by Drs. Rebecca Brendel and Kelsey Berry. Kelsey, please join us to say a few words to your graduates. Thank you, Dr. Gutliner, and thank you to family and friends for joining in celebration of our graduates today. So in preparing our congratulatory remarks for the 62 graduates of the Master of Bioethics program this year, Dr. Brendel and I wondered together how best to guide our bioethics graduates as they strike out into this changing world, just a few short weeks following the official end of the global public health emergency. What we realized upon discussion is that as much as the field of bioethics can and must evolve to meet the challenges of the day, 
It also contains timeless themes that we hope our graduates will carry forward with them into the future. First, the work of bioethics seeks to create opportunity and progress. Rather than constraining possibility, bioethics seeks to answer each challenge with a broad landscape of morally permissible and even desirable solutions as it broadens and deepens our moral lives and imaginations. It is also demanding, asking us to bring knowledge, theory, and practice together because bioethics as an applied field is in the doing. And MBE class of 2023, you have already bridged your academic learning with practice through your capstone work, collaborating with clinicians, researchers, and policymakers to tackle cutting edge bioethical challenges. Most of all, what became clear as we prepared to send you forward into the world is that we need bioethics now more than ever. We need your talents and your passion to keep the light on the ethical challenges identified during the pandemic and to ensure that no shadow obscures opportunities to work for the good. Not only must we work on bioethics as it has since its origins, shaping the ethical practice of medicine, research, and policy, but now more than ever, we must find the ways for bioethics to always lead from and lead to our shared humanity. MBE class of 2023, we see a brighter future in bioethics because of you, and we welcome you as our newest colleagues in this effort. Congratulations. And now, to present our graduates, I welcome Samantha Pitkin, Education Program Administrator for the Center for Bioethics. Ashlyn Amano. <laughs> Michelle Anzabi. <laughs> Janet O'Coin. Rigo Bell Azanwi. <laughs> Sana Bobbin. <laughs> Lakshmi Bharadwaj. <laughs> Shauna Burley. Benjamin Blevins. Adam Bricky. Samuel Carabayo. Isla Draw. Danilo DeVolco. Sarah Gabrielle. Rachel Lipson Glick. Kamna Gupta. <laughs> Haley Haldeman. <laughs> Shaoji Hao. <laughs> Nathan Hyde.
Luca Ignatowski. Tim Jankar. Sunny Jung. Adrian Jones Adamchek. Ramya Joshi. Kaniza Kadambaya. Faith Kanjira. Eric Kim. Francesca Minjo Kim. Youngjin Kim. Erica Quarantang. Caitlin Liu. Madison Listro. Sabrina Malik. Christina Martinka. Miles Maline. Gabrielle Moore. Tomo Murayama. Claire O'Connor. Unini Odama. Nathan Peterson. Constantine Simopoulos. Carolyn Baker Ringel. Rainy Romani. Margaret Cedar. Masood Sharif. Aaron Sharoni. Caitlin Ann Tabor. Basil Tarab. Danielle Torino. Alexandra Salidas. Elizabeth Warner. Helen Williams.
Jamie Wong. Charlotte Wun. And in recognition of some of the folks who couldn't join us in person today, we have Marie Laura Ali Raja, Erica Andrist, Frederic Couture Carrier, Carlos Dos Santos, Marta Fada, Jale Jafari, Cole McCabe, Christina Yen, and Christina Gavagnano. Congratulations again, MBE. We got eight more programs to go, so um, we'll keep moving. So now we will hear from Dr. Niels Gellenborg, faculty director of the Master of Biomedical Informatics, and then we'll present their graduates. Thank you, thank you. So dear graduates, I'm excited that we're gathered here today to celebrate your accomplishments. It is hard to believe that we're already sending off another class in the Master of Biomedical Informatics program, which we could not do if it were not for the commitment of the deans, faculty, administrators, and all staff at Harvard Medical School and the Department of Biomedical Informatics. And so much has happened in the short time that you spent with us. But I know you're waiting to receive your diplomas, so I'm gonna just focus on one development. The commoditization of powerful artificial intelligence models that are already impacting all of us here today will usher in major changes and fundamental changes in the field of biomedical informatics and medicine. It is your generation that will be at the helm of this transformation and therefore, it is also your obligation to rise to this occasion and ensure that everyone, everyone will benefit from this revolution in medicine and healthcare. I ask you to strive to be both bold scientific leaders and compassionate human beings who take responsibility for our shared future. So in the name of all faculty in the Department of Biomedical Informatics, our partners at the Harvard Teaching Hospitals and other affiliated institutions, and in particular, all members of the Master in Biomedical Informatics team, I'm honored to congratulate you, all of you on your graduation from Harvard Medical School. We are all grateful that you've left your mark on this community. Thank you. And yes. Now I would like to invite Senior Program Manager Rebecca Fitzhugh to come to the stage and present our graduates. Alberto Ardura Fabregat. Brendan Beaulieu Jones. Elombe Calvert. Aishwarya Chander. Elman Chen. Matthew Croson. Farah Dadaboy. <laughs> Molly Douglas.
Benedict Geiger. Nathaniel Greenbaum. Zifan Gu. Yujia Guo. Kezia Irene. Wu Jung. Renhao Luo. Lisa Rachel Matthews. Andrew Powers. Irbaz Riaz. Malta Schmieting. Thomas Chris Smits. Katrin Jawin Song. Jiazi Tien. Yuan Chen Wang. Yumin Wang. Ziki Wang. Cheryl Wang. Nina Strong. Adam Yan. April Yan. Richard Young. Julia Yaruhan. Lindsay Yu. Qingyang Zhang. Amy Zapersky. And now I would like to take a moment to recognize our students who could not join us in person today. Shang Shao, Feng Cheng, Darcy Costello, Ning Hua, Claire Jiang, Luna Li, and Yifan Wang. Congratulations, Biomedical Informatics Class of 2023. Thank you, Rebecca. Uh, next, we will present the graduates of the Master of Medical Sciences in Clinical Investigation, led by Drs. Ajay Singh, Finian McCausland, Martina McGrath, Roslyn Adam, and Lourdes Perez Chata. Ajay and Finian, please join us to say a few words to your graduates. Thank you, Dean Gutlin and Dean Daly, Dean um, Siegel, uh, colleagues. I just want to congratulate the 27 graduates from the program of clinical investigation. Congratulations. 
MMSCI is a two-year degree in clinical investigation that trains students to be leaders in clinical science. We have two tracks, clinical investigation and translational investigation. This program would not have been possible without the leadership of my colleagues here, Dr. McCausland uh, and uh, Dr. McGrath, uh, Dr. Adam, and Dr. Lourdes uh, Perez Charter. Thank you to, to them. Our outstanding program manager is Molly Gallagher, and the curriculum innovation team, Katie King and Annabelle Royer. And of course, the whole team is led by Katie Cassiopa. Thank you. And more broadly, in postgraduate medical education, I want to acknowledge Will Strawn. As De Dean Daly said in his remarks, we're global in our reach. I want to acknowledge our friends who have made our pro program possible from Egypt, China, and Tunisia. In particular, from Egypt, uh, my colleague guiding our re Egypt relationship, uh, Dr. Yusuf Farag, thank you. Uh, to the visionary, Her Excellency Dr. Hala Zayed, Dr. Abdul Ghaffar, uh, Minister of Health, uh, Dr. Ahmed Subki, Dr. Naveen El Nahas, and Dr. Khaled Megadad. Thank you. Um, I'm now going to ask my friend and colleague, Finian, to conclude. Thank you, Dr. Singh. Uh, so good afternoon, everybody, and it, it's always a, it's a pleasure to, to be at such a momentous day for all of you graduates, and congratulations on all your success. Um, if you haven't guessed by my name, and if you haven't guessed now by my accent where I'm from, uh, I'm going to give you some quotes from an Irish, couple of Irish poets, and so that should be <laughs> the last hint that you need. Uh, the first one comes from uh, a Nobel laureate called W.B. Yeats, William Butler Yeats, and he says that education is not the filling of appeal, but the lighting of a fire. And so I want you to kind of hold that in as you think about your next steps in your journey, that hopefully this is just the beginning of something really wonderful um, and inspiring as you go forward. The second kind of speaks to some of the remarks that were made earlier about the challenges that await you on the way, because there will be challenges. And this comes from Seamus Heaney, who comes from, from near where I live up north. And he says, even if the last move did not succeed, the inner command says, move again. So always be on the move and always be ready to rise to your next challenge. That's all I'm going to say, other than congratulations again to all our wonderful graduates, and we wish you every success for your future. Let me introduce um, our program manager, Molly Gallagher, who's going to uh, do the order of business for the graduates. And if I can invite our assistant and associate directors onto the podium for the, for the pictures. Thank you. Iman Ahmed Fatala Abolsad. Abdulaziz Al Hamam. Wasim Amjad. Opoyemi Awofeso <laughs> Yu Feng Chang <laughs> Anna Claudia Brenner Afonso da Costa <laughs> Meng Yuan Ding Peter De Roma, Abdurrahman Tohami, Rasha Samir Ibrahim Farag. Barbara Gomez. Sigma Hossein. Leisha Jean.
Afoke Kokogo. Arnaud Le Sir Gratin. Rizwan Gul Mamet. Grace Irina Namirembe. Jose Ignacio Nolasco. Mariana Ramirez. Walid Sadiq. Sonia Thomas. Esteban Verduzco. Don Chu Shu. Bo Wei Zhong. Yi Ray Zhou. We are also celebrating two graduates who couldn't attend in person today. They are Veronica Donato and Lei Gao. Congratulations again, MMSCI Class of 2023. Next, I want to welcome Mara Bloom and Dr. Kevin Tucker, faculty directors of the Master of Clinical Service Operations, to say a few words to their graduates. We're a team. <laughs> Congratulations to all of the HMS Master's Program students here today and to our 2023 Master in Clinical Service Operations students. Woohoo! <laughs> a special thank you to our leadership team, including our Executive Pathway leader, the amazing Ann Prestopino, our incredible Industry Pathway leader, Dr. Stanley Shaw, and our phenomenal program manager, Preeti Sharma. We couldn't do it without you. We are so excited for all 53, yes, you heard it, 53 graduates here today, our largest cohort ever. You have achieved so much and we are thrilled for your future. You truly embody the spirit of Harvard Medical School and you are each a part of this extraordinary ecosystem we call MCSO. For those of you who don't know about MCSO, we are a master's program that is a deep, deep dive in clinical operations, a place most people don't want to go. It is truly for the brave of heart, mind, and spirit. As adult learners, you all have busy day jobs as clinicians, nurses, physicians, administrators, industry professionals, and executives, yet you impress us with your curiosity, insights, and deep passion for healthcare clinical operations. You truly strive to elevate the human experience of healthcare, which is fundamental in all cultures and societies and ever-changing as the field explodes with technology and innovation. We are truly awestruck by the deep connections you form in class and through your online networks. This year was truly incredible because in addition to our traditional coursework and capstones, we saw several groups of students form new healthcare companies and collaboratives 
right before our eyes, working with a myriad of HMS's innovation labs. So thanks, Dean Daly, for all the support you provide us here at HMS. This entire cohort is an inspiration to us all. You all know that in MS MCSO, we love a quadrant. So let me use a quadrant to say what I hope that you'll take away from our program. In quadrant one are the fundamentals. We hope that we've given you the tools and techniques to deliver smooth, effective, efficient, high quality, and equitable patient care. It also takes leadership, and we hope the coursework and seminars have provided the space for self-reflection and evolution of your leadership styles. In quadrant two, MCSO values the power of teamwork, which is essential to healthcare delivery. The power of teamwork in 2023 is not only about diversity and equity, but also about creating true belonging. In quadrant three, unyielding dedication to continuous improvement. Let us not lose sight that continuous improvement requires us to be open to new ideas, approaches, and technologies. We must always measure and analyze our operations, evolve, evolve our training programs, and stay current with advances in innovation and clinical care. And in quadrant four, we hope that you stay connected to what we call the heart of healthcare, always knowing that there is a patient on the other side of every decision we make. Through MCSO, we believe strongly in the power of compassion, empathy, and kindness, not only in patient care, but also in leadership. Thank you and congratulations to our spectacular MCSO 2023 graduating class. We're confident of your future success. And now I'll introduce our program manager, Ms. Preeti Sharma, to uh, call out our graduates. Preeti. Adil Akhtar. Abdul Karim Al Olama. Adil Al Hazani. Ahmed Al Mohanadi. David Aristamanish. Carissa Bernier. Kavita Bhatt. Cortland Brown. Audrey Cohen. Jordan Davis. Panos Esta. Naveen Elnahas. Ahmed El Sofki. Amir El Tawani. Dahari Iman Ka 
allem. Derek Hall. Eugene Cheng Ian Heng. Kalathia Hodges. Juan E. Bluff. <laughs> Venu Gopal Kochil. Hasib Malik. Karen McCabe. Nathan McDonald. Khaled McGuyan. Fernando Moreira. Agwo, Agwo. Ezekiel Ojwale. Ibima Okunde. Sophie Olive. Joseph Anueza. Judy Panagiotopoulos. Shaney Reifschlager. Robert Safian. Rajiv Saini. Victor Sanchez Almaney. Ara Sablian. Catherine Mills Park Severson.
Nicholas Skull. Sophia Sills Taylor. Kevin Streeter. Love Road Tahill. Christina Valente. Lindy Washington. Mildred Watson Baylor. Arini Widodo. Mohammed Ilyas Yamani. Megan Yim. I would also like to acknowledge the students that unfortunately were not able to join us in person. Steve Lau. Sakif Shaman. Basma Darwish Al Tatan. Hatem Gamal. Congratulations, MCSO class of 2023. Woo! Thank you, Preeti. Next, we will hear from Dr. Joya Mukherjee, Faculty Director of the Master of Medical Sciences in Global Health Delivery. Yes, and I would, uh, congratulations to all of the graduates today, and I want to welcome up our amazing program manager and my singing partner, Christina Lively, to, who will read the names of all our graduates. <laughs> She's so focused on taking pictures of this wonderful group. Yeah, thank you. All right. So congratulations, Global Health Delivery Class of 2023. You are absolutely one of the top 10 cohorts ever. Um, you are full of brilliance, passion, and real joy and love for one another, and we're so proud of you. We are also so grateful for the support of your family, your friends, your loved ones, everyone who has supported you through these two-year journey, and especially my uh, partner in crime, Christina Lively. Uh, you know, and you will go on to teach, research, and practice that social forces, not just microbes, or genes or behaviors are the most correlated with health inequity here in the US and around the world. I know you will work to mitigate these social forces. Sadly, you are the last global health delivery cohort who will be able to consider yourselves first generation Paul Farmer students. Our late chairman, friend, and brother, Dr. Paul Farmer's scholarship forged our field of social medicine and global health delivery by linking anthropology, history, political economy to the study of the roots of health inequities, and importantly, the use of this knowledge to mitigate the terrible inequalities that claim people's lives every day. Paul once wrote, 
Hunger, if I am hungry, it is a material problem for me. If someone else is hungry, it is a moral problem, a spiritual problem for all of us. You have all been troubled by these moral problems, these spiritual problems. You have walked the walk with people who are suffering, and you understand that your scholarship can help liberate people from this terrible suffering. Your work, your research, your passion was carried out in homes, in communities, in hospitals, in Guatemala, the West Bank, Indonesia, the Philippines, Malawi, Sierra Leone, New Zealand, and Haiti. You have studied telemedicine, medical informatics, access to surgery, and the US opioid epidemic, among other themes. In all of your research, you integrated the biomedical with the social, the political, the economic forces while you strive to understand the drivers and the mitigation of health inequality. We are so proud to work with you. We are so proud to continue to learn with you. Our global health community will continue to be enriched by your intellect and passion. We know each of you will do great things as individuals, but most importantly, as members of this community and the communities you hail from far beyond this, these walls. Paul said, among your greatest accomplishments will be those you do with others, in short, partnerships. I hope you will remain connected with us, with each other, and to all these other beautiful, amazing members of the Harvard Graduate School community. As Nelson Mandela said, as long as poverty, injustice, and inequality exist in our world, none of us can truly rest. However, I know that our beloved Paul is resting peacefully, knowing his legacy is carried in your hearts, and all of us are resting more peacefully as well. Congratulations. Global Health Delivery Class of 2023. That's it. Chokorda Waka Gekko Dananjaya. Vanessa Jael Dor. Joshua James Ellis. Helena Maria Franco. Piva F. Babgorina. Bonifaz Hakizimana. Benito D. Isaac. Maureen Luba. Anna Mariana. Edwin Maxino Mercado. Oluchi Isioma Ndule. Shauna Novak. Susana Oregno Viejas. Jacqueline St. Fleur Sr. Anayi Benzor Strada.
Maurice Karehi Stewart. Christoph Whippel. Congratulations again to the class of 2023 Global Health Delivery students. Thank you, Christina, and congratulations, GHG graduates. Uh, the next program to present their graduates will be the Master of Healthcare Quality and Safety, led by Drs. Angela Tess, Catherine Santos, and Brittany Esty. Angela, please come to the podium and say a few words. Congratulations to the graduates from the Masters in Healthcare Quality and Safety, and congratulations to all the graduates today. On behalf of our program team, uh, Brittany Esty, Kay Santos, and Katie King, I wish you well as you celebrate this major accomplishment with your families, friends, and each other. We are so proud of you. We designed MHQS with the intent that it would accomplish one critical thing, that our graduates would leave with instincts around quality and safety to improve healthcare for all. The QI mindset is an approach that doesn't accept the need to make something better, it instead expands to celebrate the opportunity to make it better. Most importantly, the QI mindset demands that the perspective of patients and the providers who serve them remain at the center of all design. Through tools and methods, sorry, though tools and methods will reinvent themselves over the years, the QI mindset remains steadfast. But for all of you, this has been a tremendous time in addition. You joined with various levels of expertise, You've grown, developed mastery of tools and process. You'll never look at a process map the same way. You'll never order coffee the same way. We see it in the questions you ask of the speakers and your peers and in how you've crafted your capstones. All of you demonstrated the resilience required in quality and safety and overcame challenges in your projects as well. You worked incredibly hard through an intense portfolio of classes and met our ex expectations and even pushed past our expectations along the way. This you did with grace and humility, even in times of ongoing uncertainty in your environment and ours. Studying and working a full-time job at the same time is not an easy task, and despite that, you have remained cheerful and dedicated to the work and learning. We feel privileged and frankly inspired to have witnessed it all, and we look forward to seeing you how you continue to apply it in your everyday. I will close with three key refrains from the program that I hope that you will take with you. Number one, understand before you solve. Number two, strengthen your ideas through testing and reflection. And number three, keep the patience at the center of everything. Congratulations, please know that we're truly gonna miss you but intend to stay in touch. This is just the beginning of our journey together. I would like to welcome Katie King to the stage to call our candidates' names for graduation, and uh, Brittany Esty and Kay Santos for the picture. Asma Adnan. Firas Albakak. Ala Alhaj. Iram Azar. Alexander Barron. Eunice Ijaz. Mitra Kahani. Mohammed Ali Kezrian. (Applause) 
Emmett Kistler. Juan Lagarda Cuevas. Jessica Law. Jack Liu. Iswarya Madhu. Andrea McHugh. Iqbal Ratnani. Lisa Ricky. Charles Roach. Nita Sahani. Alik Sarian. John Schallenkamp. Anna Sitiamorn. Katriona Stewart. Aro Viswabanda. Silky Huang. We'd like to recognize our graduates who could not attend in person today. Jim Doolin, Rehab El Sokari, Ronnie Ogad, Nala Gamaleddin, Gregory Lea, Lindsay Mortensen, Shada Skaff, and Raya Zayadeen. Thank you, Katie, and congratulations again, MHQS graduates. Next, we will present the graduates of the Master of Medical Sciences in Immunology, led by Dr. Shiv Pillay and Michael Carroll. Shiv, please come say a few words. Immunology graduates, on behalf of Michael Carroll, Gavin Porter, Naima Abdullahi, and myself, really warm and hearty congratulations. You came here two years ago, and we put a mountain of knowledge in front of you. But you stepped up to the plate, you mastered that knowledge. Then we said, go out there and create some new knowledge yourself that we can add to this mountain. And all of you went out and did some amazing work, work that is going to help us protect people from infections, is the kind of work that has helped cure cancer, that can help people with severe inflammation and autoimmunity walk again, or see with clarity, or get rid of gut-wrenching pain, or just lead healthier and happier lives. And we know that we're all very proud of you, but we're also going to be very proud of you for the years to come, when you're going to keep doing things that are going to help everyone on the planet. I now call upon Naima Abdullahi, our program manager, to come and present the graduates. Sayan Scarlett Chun. Ruran Guan.
Jordan Alexander Hartman. Thank you. Yuhan Huan. Anson Huey. Noah Jacobs. Gabrielle Jessica Camboan. Grim Junie Kim. Rebecca Kim. Roting Lu. Alina Idral Shen. Yinao Yinan Xiao. Yanyi Sun Bonnie Schwang Tao Shu Danting Zhang Jichen Chu Jingyao Chu Congratulations to the MMSC in Immunology Class of Thank you, Naima, and congratulations again to the immunology graduates. I am really excited to present the very first class of graduates from our newest program, the Master of Science in Media, Medicine, and Health, led by Drs. Jason Silverstein and Neil Baer. Neil, the podium is yours. Hello. Thank you for being here today, family, friends, and of course the graduates. We wouldn't be here without the support of our gifted faculty and mentors, our program manager and assistant, Carol Benoit, and Chris Kenny, who kept the wheels on the bus running and rolling along, and to Jason Silverstein, the cheerleader and co-director of our program, who is always on call. Thanks to the deans, Joanna Gutlerner, Roz Siegel, George Daly, for their support from the beginning, and especially to Ed Hundert, David Jones, and the late Paul Farmer, who were there from the very, very beginning. Now, for you all. You are the first cohort in the Master of Science degree program in Media, Medicine, and Health at Harvard Medical School. We are, we are deeply and overwhelmingly proud of you. You've drawn on the arts and humanities to tell compelling stories to address some of the most perplexing and daunting problems facing the world. Access to and delivery of excellent health care as a fundamental human right. You are raising objections to the hate and fear that are infecting our country and the world by telling stories grounded in empirical research that rouse the mind and the heart. Your sharp and eloquent capstone papers and presentations pierce the cloud of dogma that would deny care to people of color, the unhoused, the trans and queer communities, 
Muslim communities, immigrants, and anyone who is othered or being erased by those who fear cha cha changing the status quo and who will try to smother your stories with mis- and disinformation. But you have the power in your words, dance, painting, animation, oratory, poetry, graphic design, essays, op-eds, video games, scripts, autobiographies, children's literature, TikTok, photography, e-zines, podcasts, and documentaries to change attitudes and shine a light on our shared humanity. Use the tools you've developed here to give voice to protest and hope. Shake us up, rile us, blast orthodoxy and privilege. Show us the beauty of storytelling in all its variety of forms and colors and sounds and movements. We're in awe of you. We have glowing admiration for your advocacy, for your empathy, for your kindness. We take joy in your unflagging support of each other and beckon you to stay in touch with your colleagues, your faculty, your mentors, and with Jason and me. We are all on this journey together to address the pervasive injustice of social, economic, and political conditions that give rise to inequity and, fearfully, fascism that is choking our country. You give me optimism. I know you will use storytelling to embrace all that is good in us. I know you will release a bouquet of stories into a world that needs your help and your sustenance. Congratulations. We wish you the best. Now, I invite our co-director, Jason Silverstein, to come up and read the names. No. 100% I'm going to cry. Razan Mohammed Badula. <laughs> Paige Lissette Bailey. Ramya Sai Chanduri. <laughs> Katerina Lillian Cook. Ashley Marie Cooper. <laughs> Nina Jumfor Poku. <laughs> Brianna Harvey. Jacqueline Lee Huntington. <laughs> Leah Christine Jackson. <laughs> Uma. Kamraj. <laughs> Josephina Lynn. So 
Bailey Merlin. Sahana Narayan. David Edward Perry. Anitan Tejioso. <laughs> Lawrence Weru. <laughs> Tolani Yesufu. Elizabeth Ann Zonerich. Congratulations again, the very first class of the Master of Science in Media Medicine and Health. Every year, by chance of alphabetical order, the, the Master of Medical Sciences and Medical Education students are very patient, and you are def you're last but definitely not least. And so um, this program led by Dr. Christina Fisher and Martin Pusick, um, we're excited to welcome the graduates and Christina will say a few words. Thank you. Distinguished deans, faculty, guests, dear graduates of the Masters of Medical Sciences and Medical Education program, congratulations. Look at all you have accomplished. You have dedicated yourself to learning core concepts in medical education, such as foundations of cognitive science, adult learning theory, curriculum development, the use of education technology, and principles of assessment. You learned about qualitative and quantitative methodologies, a toolbox that will allow you to go where the important questions are. You have tackled ambitious and consequential topics in medical education and have genuinely moved our field forward through your research findings. You have probed the surgical learning environment, investigating the growth mindset and the feedback culture. You have designed a sophisticated simulation model uh, that can be patented and published. You assess the need for curriculum development in pediatric trauma care. Several of you have designed a cutting edge educational intervention and a research trial that proved it worked. Such examples include an ultrasound boot camp, an online pathology module, and a virtual simulation session. You also rolled up your sleeves with qualitative methods to surface important insights, such as why medical educators do what they do. While we are thrilled to congratulate you on all of these new academic accomplishments, we also would like to congratulate you on who you are and how you participated in this educational community. Coming from several continents, health professions, and clinical domains, you are amongst our first classes to complete your degree entirely virtually. We learned together how to learn and teach effectively virtually. We are very grateful for your partnership, creativity, and feedback in this process. On behalf of our mentors, thesis committee experts, and program faculty, we wish to tell you what a privilege it has been to participate in your professional development and celebrate with you as educators and scholars. We cannot wait to see the incredible impact you will have on training the next generation of health profession educators. Congratulations to the class of 2023. We are so proud of you.
please allow me to introduce our Associate Program Director, Eris Heller, who is going to present the graduates. And please welcome Dr. Martin Fusik, who is the co-director of the program. Maryam al -Nuemi. Eric Bortnick. Grace Bravo. Marie Doe. Keegan McNally. Cynthia Stein. Zachary Whaley. I'd like to acknowledge the students who were not able to be here to celebrate in person. Jody Plateau. And last but not least, Christine Wu. Congratulations to the Master of Medical Sciences and Medical Education Class of 2023. Thank you, Ayers. And congratulations again to all of our Harvard Medical School 2023 Master's Program graduates. So, I'm the only thing that stands between you and a glass of wine or a snack with your family, so I will be brief. Um, just a few closing remarks and some announcements. Dean Siegel, Dean Daly, Dr. Brendel, and Costi, thank you for being here and for addressing our graduates. Thank you to all of the friends and families who've joined us to celebrate our graduates today and have supported them all along the way. Thank you to our master's program faculty leadership, our teaching faculty, mentors, and administrators who've worked tirely, tirelessly to support all of your success today. And thank you to everyone who helped make today's ceremony happen, including all of our facility staff, program administrators, and most especially James Bogie, Gabby Calderon, and Kim Lincoln who produced today's ceremony. Um, graduates, as soon as I finish talking, make your way over to the steps of Gordon Hall for a class of 2023 photo, and then you're free to party. Family, friends, and guests, please join us for a reception at the back of the tent, and your graduates will join as soon as the photo is taken. I finally, I just want to offer a few words of congratulations. Your successful graduation from the Harvard Medical School Master's Programs is a testament to the incredible hard work, perseverance, and resilience of each of you. I hope that the intellectual curiosity that brought each of you here and fueled your success will persist and drive your continued personal and professional growth. And now you have not only new skills and knowledge, but a network of colleagues, collaborators, friends, and champions here at Harvard and in the global Harvard community to support your future success. As a graduate, you're part of that community, and I hope that you will cultivate it and grow and benefit from it, just as we have all grown and, and learned from you. And now I'm honored to officially present to you the Harvard Medical School 2023 Masters Program graduates. <laughs> 